We remember and honor our ancestors, praise and respect our elders. We remember and honor our ancestors, praise and respect our elders. We don't know what tomorrow will bring, but we pray for peace. Let us forget about ourselves. Magnify his name and worship Christ the Lord, for he is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead. And he is Lord. Good morning. Saul Bonani. We welcome you to the Sojourner Truth Presbyterian Church virtual worship service. And we greet you with the EC Zulu greeting of Saul Bonani. 
meaning we welcome all of you. We see all of you. We honor all of you. We respect all of you. We welcome all of you. We are one with all of you. And in this place, you matter. I'm the Reverend Kamal Hassan, the pastor of Sojourner Truth Presbyterian Church. And on behalf of your siblings and our wonderful, beloved community, we welcome you to this time with one another and with God. Today is a particularly important Sunday on our Christian calendar. It's the Sunday we recognize, remember, and honor the life, the legacy, the ministry, the power, the hopefulness in the life of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Thank God for the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and what he left for us. And so we'll honor him in song, in liturgy, in worship, in preaching, in prayer, because in honoring him, as once was said about Malcolm X, we honor the best in ourselves. Let us go in worship, in spirit, and in truth. Amen. Join me now for the community prayer. Bow your heads and open your hearts. Spirit of the living, the only living God, we the people of your community need your grace and your mercy. Our heads are bowed, our hearts are open and our knees are bent because we the people thirst we thirst, we desire to drink from the fountain of the justice for all. We the people are hungry. We want our right to vote and to be counted because we matter. We can't breathe because the COVID virus suffocates us even when we are in the hospital. We continue to grieve the many empty chairs of our loved ones from the community that have transitioned and our hearts are broken. Please heal us, Lord. We, the people are exhausted because the exploiters, the stalkers, the perpetrators continue to use human beings in a modernized slave system, but we fight. Please, Lord, rescue us. Our community recalls the sting, the stench of the blood-stained bridges that even today continue to divide us. Oh, God, we need your light to guide and direct our steps as we march toward the divine purpose. Please fill our lungs with holy oxygen until our day is done. Lord, hear our prayers and bless us with your answer. Amen.
Good morning, church, and please join me in the call to worship. Oh, hear the God, hear the voice of God, powerful and majestic. Know the presence of God in whirlwind and flames. God speaks to us in thunder and fire. God is revealed in a quiet voice within us. See the works of God in the life of Jesus. Feel the spirit gently descending on our gathering. God calls us to ministries of healing. God accepts and affirms us and fills us with light. Remember your baptism and sense God's benediction. Recall God's covenant and dare to live by it. God takes us by the hand and keeps us. God grants us a spirit of caring and service. For our contemporary word today, we will have a short video about Dr. King's movement in the second Selma March. Amen. And now please join me in the litany. In every era, God has chosen people to serve the needs of his people. Such a servant was Martin Luther King Jr., whose birth we celebrate. We are deeply thankful for the life of this 20th century prophet. May the wisdom and the words of Martin Luther King rekindle our faith. May the deep love that Dr. King had for all people be released in us, that we too might work miracles in the lives of those who continue to hate. Dr. King taught that only love can overcome hatred, bitterness, and fear. May his struggle for social transformation continue in this generation. May all people come to believe that with perseverance, we shall overcome. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. May the work of Dr. King continue to eradicate racial injustice and its ungodly consequences. Dr. King pursued his dream for social, for racial equality by appealing to the conscience of his enemies. May we continue to cultivate the nonviolent discipline of Dr. King, abandoning unrestrained actions, unrestrained acts of force. He taught us that a heart full of grace and love is just as important as an education. May the spirit of Dr. King continue to flow through our daily living. He believed in self-respect and dignity, even though he knew that there would be difficult days ahead. May we have the courage of Dr. King as we continue to stand up for justice reconciliation and truth, despite challenge and controversy. Dr. King said that war is never a victory, regardless of the outcome. May the peace of the risen Christ cause the fury of war to vanish from, a, from the face of the earth. Dr. King went to the mountaintop he saw the promised land and he reassured us that we will get there one day. God of glory, be with us on the journey. For the announcements of today, the discipleship class is canceled for today and will resume on the second Sunday in February. And now uh, Cora Brown will talk to us about our upcoming celebration, 50th anniversary. Good morning. Um, we are becoming closer and closer to our 
great celebration of 50 years of being a church and a family. And I'm hoping that most of you have gotten your invitations by now and also the information on putting in an ad or getting someone to put in an ad. Um, if you have any questions about the ads, they should go to Connie Bridgewater. And if you have any questions regarding the invitation, they should go to Sandra Richardson. But anyone on the committee can hopefully try to answer your questions. And we appreciate your um, supporting, supporting us and let's make this one of the most momentous occasion. And um, I really would like to have, I know that there were two songs and I would like to have them together because we did not get a chance to sing it before the litany. Thank you.
you'll never walk alone when you trust in Jesus. When you put your life in the service of God. When you consider the needs of others ahead of your own. When you attempt to allow the holy life of God to live in you, this is the core of the message today. How we may allow God to live God's holy life in us as Martin did. That's, that's why we remember him. He, he allowed the holy life of God to live in him, to animate his life, to give him courage in ridiculously dangerous situations and both the high times, you saw those 8,000 people cheering as he preached and the low times after he opposed the Vietnam War and was thought a fool. This is the preaching moment. This is the time to search the scriptures for what the spirit is saying to the church through the life of Jesus and today through the life of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, a powerful ancestor who, who prays for us now from heaven. He prays for us now from heaven, probably praying right alongside the Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who made his transition not so long ago. Consider the power of their prayers for us as I invite you to pray with me the prayer for illumination. Jesus now the life, the way. In thine image, let us be. Keep our hearts from day to day. Live thy holy life in me. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord our rock, our strength, our hope, our liberator, and our redeemer. In this name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Sermonic scripture for today comes from one of Paul's pastoral epistles. One of his writings, one of his letters to Peter. We're looking today at 1 Peter, the second chapter, verses 4 through 10. We are inquiring this morning, we are searching, we are questioning, we are seeking this morning through the first letter to Peter, second chapter, verses four through 10. Today I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible, and I invite you to please listen closely for the word of God. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, 
let yourself be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture. See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious. And whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. If you then who believe, he is precious. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner. And a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people. In order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. For this morning, our sermonic theme is being precious stones. Being precious stones. In the building trades during the time of Paul and Peter, the first thing that was laid upon which things were built was the cornerstone. The cornerstone was the most important part of the building's foundation. And if the cornerstone was weak, then the building would not sit on a firm foundation and its chances of falling over, collapsing, were increased. It was dangerous to build something on top of a weak cornerstone. And so one of the tasks for those who constructed buildings was to choose between possibilities of stones, which one was the best and which one was the strongest and which one was the most acceptable in terms of being able to support the weight of those things that would be built on top of them. And it was of course common practice for some stones to be selected and others to be rejected. Mm -hmm. So stones that may have shown some signs of cracking or some signs of crumbling or some signs that they might not be strong enough for the work, for the holding up of the building. Uh, they, were, they were tossed aside. They were not used because they, they didn't seem right for the work. Mm -hmm. And so, so, so Paul writes about the, the stone that would hold up God's house. The foundation, the cornerstone that would hold up God's house. And he says of this that the stone the builders rejected 
the one that was not deemed strong enough, the one that was not deemed pure enough, the one that was not deemed acceptable or strong enough was the one tossed away. And that stone is the one God chose as the cornerstone for God's house. Jesus, not wealthy or strong, not formally educated, not of a, of a lineage of wealthy people or even of priests, a poor carpenter's son born under disgraceful circumstances from the ghettos of Galilee where the question, can anything good come from there? Surely no one would have chosen this one to lead God's movement. Certainly the Pharisees, Sadducees, and teachers did not think he met the qualifications to be the cornerstone of God's house. Certainly the Romans didn't believe that Anything of value or worth to the God or gods could be led by Jesus, this dog of a Jew. And yet, from a rejected people, God chooses him to be the cornerstone of the household of faith. And all that God stands up as acceptable is built on him. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone the one upon all that God has called us to, to do and be rests on him. Our lives rest on him. Both the past, the present, and the future rest on him, the one who was rejected by those who were trying to get the best stone the cornerstone of God's house of faith. Rejected by mortals, but acceptable to God. Well, well what is it that Jesus had that, that made him acceptable as the cornerstone of the household of faith? The one who was worthy of imitation by those who would who would seek to live God's holy life in them. What did he do? What did he say? Who, who did he be? That we should believe in him. And we should seek to be his disciples that we would be baptized in his name. And that the Holy Spirit, upon our baptism, would begin to work inside of us, little by little, day by day, experience by experience, prayer by prayer, Praise by praise, worship by worship, song by song, love by love from mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers and cousins and church mothers and pastors and teachers and uncles. That the goal is to be more like him. What was it? Well, I heard it as I was waiting for worship 
to start this morning. I was trying to think of how could I express this? And then I heard one of my favorite hymns, In Me. The very first song when our, our, our music before worship started, it came on it. And, and it, the Holy Spirit answered my prayer right there. I was, I was almost crying out of gratitude. I want to just share some of the lyrics. I don't know if you heard the song or if you remembered them, but I just had to write them down. Hear this, hear this, hear this. Jesus, thou the life, the way. In thine image, let me be. Keep my heart from day to day. Live thy holy life in me. Jesus now, the joy untold. Like a river flowing free. Be thou ever in my soul. Let thy joy abound in me. And then there was one, the last one, Holy Spirit, heavenly dove, magnify thy love in me. Let thy joy abound in me. Magnify thy love in me. Live thy holy life in me. See that? The Trinity, huh? So the thing that made it possible for Jesus to be chosen to be the cornerstone of God's household of faith was that he did allow God's joy to abound in him. Yes, he did. And he did let God's love be magnified in him. Yes, he did. And lastly, he allowed God's holy life to be lived in him. So because of these things, the holy life and the joy, and the magnification of God's presence in him that made him the cornerstone that God built up this household of faith. That made him the model that all of us who seek God through Christianity should follow. Because through this, he showed how people with their backs against the wall could live holy lives of dignity and integrity. And we, we revere Martin because he did that too. He allowed God to be magnified in him, didn't he? Didn't he? He allowed God's holy life to be lived in him, didn't he? Didn't he? He allowed God's joy to abound in him. 
Didn't he? Didn't he? And everyone who has said yes to Jesus is expected to invite the same things into themselves. This is how we become the holy priesthood that Paul said Peter and those who listen to him could become. By allowing God's joy to be magnified in us, by allowing Jesus' holy life to be lived in us, That's how we too are precious stones. And God wants to use us to build a new household of faith in this year and in the years to come. We are God's precious stones. You, you, yes, you, you are God's precious stones. You are God's holy priesthood. In you resides the hope for the world. Don't play yourself small. This is the power of believing. Our theme for this first quarter, the power of the, this is the power of believing. That if you ask, God's holy life to be lived in you, God will say yes. If you ask God's joy to be magnified in you, God will say yes. But you'd say, preacher, I, my life, I'm not, I'm, I'm like, I'm not like that. I'm not perfect. I got so many things. I, my prayer life, spotty. Sometimes I'm on it, sometimes I'm not. My Bible life, hmm, it could be better. And, 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 and and I even try to love people who don't love me, but sometimes I just can't get there. I mean, if I want to be in a beloved community, doesn't that mean that all of the people there should love me and treat me well? You don't really mean beloved community with people who are like haters or always got a bad attitude or always saying something they shouldn't say and getting on my nerves and I, a holy priest me i can't see it i mean it sounds good but i can't see it but remember the stone that the builders rejected became the head cornerstone. Not the perfect one. Not the one without cracks. But the one who prayed, live thy holy life in me. Magnify thyself in me. Let thy joy abound in me. Not because I already have it all, but because I believe you. That's the power of believing. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Yes, you are the holy priesthood. Yes, you are the cornerstone that God wants to build love and a beloved community right on you. This is our 
mission in 2022, Sojourner, in a 50th year. Believe it. Believe it. Believe it. Stop thinking small. Let's dream God's future for this church and our community and this world together. Martin didn't think small because the holy life of God was living. He would, God's holy life was being lived in him. Did he have flaws and faults? Absolutely. Failures. Adultery. All of that. Yet God lived God's holy life in him. And today we revere that part. So of us, beloved. That's why you're here. That's why God still got you breathing. Because God needs this royal priesthood to arise especially now in these times. It's worse now in America than it was when Martin lived. The wealth gap is wider. The unemployment statistics for our people is higher. The violence on the streets, the white terrorism is wider and broader. This kid got acquitted for shooting down protesters with an illegal weapon. The problem of the unhoused has mushroomed. God's household of faith is needed. If we ever need it before, you needed it before, we sure do need it now. Do you hear the clarion call? For this royal priesthood called Sojourner Truth Church, do you hear the clarion call of God's household of faith? How much we are needed now? We are the precious stone. We are the beloved community. And no, being in beloved community does not just mean being with those who love you and affirm you. It's being with the difficult ones as well. And learning how to do that in a loving way. Learning how to be that. Not just when it's easy, but also when it's hard. That's the practice that helps us to become more like Jesus. Because we recognize that when we are trying to do those things that are beyond us and we draw closer to God, that's actually the suffering helps us grow our relation with the divine. So if you don't have suffering, then your, then your relationship is shallow. Martin was so close to God because he suffered so much persecution and he had to have a deeper prayer life. He dare not only rely on his own resources. So your haters can be the motivators of the deepening of your faith. How about that? People trying to knock you off cause you to grow up your relationship with God. Ain't that something? To build up your prayer life. To go deeper into the Bible. To get guidance for how you're not going to lose your heart and not going to lose your soul. Keep my heart from day to day.
Let's follow Jesus. Let's follow Martin. Let's grow up together as a royal priesthood. Let's grow up together as a chosen nation, rejected by mortals, but acceptable to God. Rejected by mortals because of white supremacy. Rejected by mortals because of patriarchy. Rejected by mortals because of capitalism. Rejected by mortals because of homophobia. But acceptable and righteous unto God. Who will trust the future on us. Can you hardly believe it? God trusts the future in us. If we allow the holy life of God to live in us. If we allow God's joy to abound in us. If we would allow God's love to be magnified in us, then we be living stones like Jesus and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Beloved, would you really like God's holy life to be lived in you? Would you? Mm -hmm. Would you like God's joy to abound in you? Would you like God's love to be magnified in you, in everything you do, in everyone that you encounter? Would you like these things to happen? This is the promise of baptism. This is what you get when you get that, the Holy Spirit that helps God's holy life to live in you. Have you been baptized yet? If not, it's available. It's available. You can have it. It's free. You have but to ask. And if you have that baptism, but you're not a part of a spiritual house, you're not a regular member of a household that is built on that cornerstone, which is Jesus, then we, we want you to join us here at Sojourner and, and help learn to be a priest with us as we learn. You won't find anybody who's made it all the way among us, not me. <laughs> no, I'm still trying to get it. Still trying, grateful for grace and another chance. Some things that just, I can't, I can't get it without God's help. And I, I'm, I'm learning, trying to be patient with myself as God is patient with me and also with you. But we, we need you to join us. We need you to help build us. We need you to help us dream what the church will be as we look at its 50th year of existence. Not trying to reach back and be anything we've been before. Not dropping everything from the past. No, this is a sand profile. We're going to pick what works and what's still relevant. Take it with us as we go into God's new thing. And we want you to come along with us. Because there's parts of this we're not going to be able to get to without your help. That's real. 
That's honest. That's true. So let's have a conversation about this, you and I. Let's, let's talk. Let's pray together. Let's inquire of God together about your relationship with Sojourner Truth Presbyterian Church. We're small enough to know you, but large enough to serve you and serve God with you, with you, your family, your community, the things and the people that you really care about. We, we want to be on that journey with you. So just send an email to me at teachelder at gmail.com, teachelder at gmail.com, title line membership. And let's begin the journey together. Our second invitation at this part of our worship services has to do with giving, with sharing, with gifting, with showing gratitude to God by sharing a portion of what God has already shared with you, trusted you with. You got it first. God didn't do a deduction <laughs> and then give you the rest of it. No, you got it all first because God trusts your willingness to share what has been shared with you. And so there are several ways that you can do that with us at Sojourner. You can go to our website, sojournertruthpchurch.org. And on our homepage, there's a donate button that you can use quickly and securely. You can go to Givelify, either on your phone or online. And on Givelify, we're listed as Sojourner Truth United Presbyterian Church. And you can give, again, quickly and securely there. And then if you are an Amazon user, boy, I spend so much money on Amazon, especially since the pandemic. Um, but I also, what I also did was sign up with Amazon Smile. And if you do that, and again, you, you designate to Sojourner Truth United Presbyterian Church, then a particular percentage of many of the products and things you buy on Amazon will go to us for our use in building God's kin, K-I-N, um, and we would love it if you would add that feature if you haven't already. And, and thanks and shout out to those of you who have signed up, signed on to uh, Amazon Smile and are helping us financially through that process. You can mail a contribution to the church. Uh, we have a, a shut again. We're not meeting in person in the church uh, now. Uh, we won't be for the rest of January, and then we'll see what we're going to do in February and going forward. But for now, uh, we're not having in-person services. But you can mail your contribution to the church at our address, 2621 Shane Drive, Richmond, California. 94806, and we will receive your contributions with joy and gratitude and use them with integrity and honesty. Um, and then if you'd like to drive it up and drop it off, you can do that. Um, secretary is not there every day, but you can take it to our fellowship hall, the H. Eugene Farlow Fellowship Hall, which is the building on the lower side of the property, on the western facing uh, side of the property. It has a door that faces east, it's green, and it has a mail slot in it, and you can drop your contribution right in there, and have, get, you know, have a chance to get out of all the cooped upness we all have being at home so much now. Take a drive and uh, do some of God's work by sharing your contributions with Sojourner. And we certainly, as a small church, need all of your contributions and then some. So if you have friends that you can invite to also support us, we would love that. Um, this year, we're going to be building a donors program for those who want to make regular contributions to us. Whether you're members of Sojourner or not, or you respect the work that we're doing, 
we want to be on your minds and, uh, and in your heart when you think about the charitable contributions you're going to be making in 2022. And so we want to build that as well. So we'll be telling you more about that as, as, as time passes. So those are the ways, you know, you can share your time, your talent, your treasure with Sojourner. And we love you and thank you for all of that. And we invite ruling elder Connie Bridgewater to now pray our offertory prayer. Dear Lord, bless us today as we give this generous offering, as we follow the ways of the Lord to be the cornerstones of the church. Dr. Martin Luther King was a servant of God. And as we enter this holiday weekend, for in honor of Martin Luther King, we use the funds to do the service of the church and for the community. Bless us again with the, in your holy name, in Jesus Christ, amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all oh people here below. Praise God above ye heavenly hosts. Creator Christ and Holy Ghost. Amen. Just beautiful. Thank you, Darlene. And thank you so much, choir, for all of the songs. They were just amazing. And now lift every voice and sing. Amen. Amen. So that's a reminder. So in the month of February, uh, I'm going to be preaching a different stanza of Lift Every Voice and Sing every Sunday. Oh, that's going to be our sacred text for uh, the first, second, and third Sunday. So I'm going to preach the first stanza, uh, the first Sunday in February, and the second stanza, the second uh, Sunday in February, and the third stanza of Lift Every Voice and Sing. I'll be preaching that on the third Sunday in February. So spread the word. Let folks know this is going to be great. And uh, now let's prepare for um, our benediction. And then after the benediction, we're going to hear the choir sing happy birthday to Dr. King. So, <sighs> beloved, go forward as a holy nation, a royal priesthood allow yourselves to be god's precious stones upon which can be built and extended god's household of faith you need not be perfect only faithful go forward now to spread the word of joy and hope into every place where you go, to every people that you see, and help them to understand that we as a people will get to the promised land. Martin saw it and he said it, and I believe it. In the name of the Holy Mother, the Son, and the Blessed Holy Spirit in ages past, now, and forevermore. Amen. Happy birthday, Dr. King.
Oh my goodness, that was wonderful. <laughs> Can we all raise our holy hands? Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Birthday. Wonderful, wonderful. Happy birthday indeed. Amen. So beloved, go in peace. And may the peace of God go with you. We'll see you next time. Bye.